Are you gonna tell me yes? Hey guys, Tammy here. Today I'm gonna make some blackened fish tacos. Uh, we really like the blackened seasoning on chicken and I've had blackened fish before so I thought I would make a taco. I really like fish tacos. Normally the ones that I get are uh, fried. Well, I mean like deep fried with batter. So, uh, cause this is gonna be fried too, but a different type. And uh, the other thing is normally when I make a fish taco, I would make it on a corn tortilla. But since we try to be low carb here most of the time, uh, I'm gonna use low carb flour tortillas. So I hope you guys are gonna like this video. Um, before I start frying the fish, I'm going to show you my pico de gallo that I put, I already got it all chopped up. I'm just going to show you kind of just mix it up. Normally, um, I would have done this probably 30 minutes ago to give it time to marry to all the flavors to marry together. But uh, today I wanted to show you how simple it is to make a quick pico de gallo so then it, it really tastes better fresh than buying it. But if you don't have time, you can um, buy, buy already made at the market. But I think it's really worth the time to make it yourself. So let's get into the ingredients for the pico de gallo. So what I have here is five Roma tomatoes. And I just chopped them all up. Uh, normally, I I tried my best to to give you guys measurements because I usually do this by eye. I just kind of keep putting till it looks right to me because this is all about what you feel would taste good. So what I add to mine, so this is like I said, five tomatoes. Uh, this is about a half an onion two cloves of garlic. I'm gonna say probably about a quarter cup of cilantro and two jalapenos. And then I'm gonna squeeze some lime juice in. Probably half a lime is about, probably about a tablespoon. So I may use a whole lime uh, since I have quite a few tomatoes. So probably about two tablespoons of lime juice, I think that's, and then I just add a little salt, and that's about it. Very simple. So what I like to do is I always like to put salt on the tomatoes first. And I don't measure, but I would guess maybe a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just going to add this and then two jalapenos here. If you like it hotter, you can use, you can use three or, you know, you use a sereno pepper that would make it a little more uh, spicier. Or if you don't like it that spicy, only use one jalapeno. But pretty much that's it. You just mix it up here. And then I'm going to add a little more salt. And a few, and a little bit of lime. This must not have been one of my hot ones. That's not coming out very much. Let me grab one of these other ones. Oh yeah, this is much better. So. What I done was I put these in the microwave for about 10 seconds and that helps you, um, helps the juice come out easier. So I'm just going to mix that up and that's about it. Very simple, tastes much better than the store bought and it's very quick. 
and it's all about your taste. So you could add other ingredients if you want, but this is just a basic pico de gallo. This is something I love to put on my tacos. So there you got it. That's my pico de gallo. I'm just going to set it aside so we can get going on the fish. Oh, I should have put the stove on while we were waiting. Let me set this over here. Get rid of this. I'm going to grab my fish. So this is my uh, blackened seasoning. It's just paprika, smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, um, oregano, basil, salt. Uh, if you want to get the recipe for this, you can go to uh, my YouTube channel, channel TL71, and I I done a quick video of the ingredients with the measurements. So that's what we have here. And then the fish I'm going to use today is cod. So I went to the market and got a few cod loins. And then I cut them into strips, like kind of like a log, to, so that it would fit the taco better. So we got that going. So I'm just going to start putting the spice on here. Oh, and I did pat these dry and they're starting to look kind of glossy again, but when I washed them and then uh, patted them dry. So I'm just putting the seasoning on here. And I'm not going to do all of these. I'm just going to do probably three or four pieces because um, I am working on a tempura batter, a keto tempura batter, and I wanted to try it on fish. So hopefully that comes out good. If it does, we'll be doing a video on that. If it doesn't, back to the drawing board. So get that covered. Looks pretty good. Now, dumb question. I noticed you have some cabbage over there. Um, are you, I know you said you're going to put some lemon on it or some lime. Is that something you would do like a little bit earlier so it gets a chance to really kind of get that flavor or just do it right before you serve? I usually do it just right before I serve because I like the citrus, the lime, the lime flavor. And I don't put very much on there. I just uh, put enough so that the cabbage isn't plain. And I'll be doing that here shortly after I get this fish going. So in this pan I have about a tablespoon, I don't know why it's popping so much. I have about a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of oil. And I think I can do one more with the amount of spice I have here. Let's get one more in here. Uh, I should have done one more the same size so they cooked evenly. I'll just have to keep an eye on this little guy. All right. So on Sunday, we took a little keto break to kind of see what was in the refrigerator and kind of get rid of some random stuff we had in there, right? And you tried. Not quite hot enough. And you tried something. Do you want to tell the people about what you tried? Yeah, I was going to get the fish going and then I was going oh, to tell them about sorry, it. Sorry, I didn't read the production notes. Read next time. No, I'm just kidding. We just do this at the, you know, however it comes out. So, um, so anyway, we, like he said, we just were, I had this frozen dinner that we had bought because I wanted to try and I should have done a review on it but I didn't. I was hungry and I was like, oh, I'm just going to pop this in the microwave. And let me see. Let me grab the... So I saved the box so I could tell you guys about it. So it's the Guy Fieri's Flavor Town Cheesy Lasagna with Pepperoni and Marinara Sauce. So I thought, hmm, that sounds tasty. And, you know, it's a TV dinner. So you know it's not going to be like it's coming out of a chef's kitchen or something. But I thought, 
that shouldn't be bad. I, I like frozen lasagna sometimes. Sometimes it tastes pretty good. Well, when I first opened it, I thought, well, that looks kind of weird. It looked um, like it had like some white goop in the middle. I don't know. It just didn't look real well, look real, not real good. But I was like, well, you got to put it in the microwave and cook it up. I don't know why this is not hot enough. I don't want to overcook my fish. So I cooked it up. It didn't smell very good, but you never know. So I got it out. I looked, I started, you know, stirring it because the directions say to stir it and then you uh, put it back in for another minute. And well, I don't want to tell you what it looked like since we're doing a, a video, but it looked like it had already been eaten by somebody that didn't care for it. <laughs> it, was, it was not very good. I, I really did not uh, care for it. And, and my kids would tell you, and my husband too, normally if I make something or try something like that and it's not the best thing in the world i still eat it i'll eat it it's not the greatest but you know it's food i paid for it i'm gonna eat it i could not eat this tv dinner i tried i sat there for a while i stirred it i tried to eat from the other side where it didn't have the white stuff and it just was not good and i, I was just very shocked I was really shocked that uh, that wasn't that good when it came from, you know, one of the chef guys. I wouldn't think that they would allow it to go out not good. Oh, that's browning up pretty good. So that was my experience with Flavor Town. It definitely was not Flavor Town. I don't know what to call it, but it was. It wasn't good. That's all I have to say about it. But this fish is looking pretty good. I just got to get these other sides uh, cooked up here. So the, the Guy Fieri thing wasn't that good. And I think that's the second TV dinner you've tried where it's from a uh, celebrity chef that you enjoy. I mean, first you had the Gordon Ramsay one, and you had this one. Do you think it's just everyone's doing the cash grab, or do you think it's just the universe saying, you know what, <laughs> I can make this better myself and probably more healthier? I don't know. I, I, I think that they probably come out with a pretty good product, but then by the time it's mass-produced and froze for who knows how long, it, it just doesn't taste like it should. So, looking at that guy theory, it was called a, uh, what was it, lasagna with pepperoni. Do you think that that could be a future video, on a non-keto video, Tammy's version, what's Tammy cooking, uh, pepperoni lasagna? Well, I think I could definitely make it better than what I what I had in that TV dinner. I don't know if it would be the greatest thing in the world. Ooh, what about an eggplant lasagna? I love eggplant. So my only concern doing a pepperoni eggplant lasagna would be the pepperoni tends to be greasy and that'll give you like a lot of grease in your lasagna. That might not be good, with, especially with the eggplants because eggplants tend to be a little bit more watery as well. I didn't get me a plate. Can you hand me one, please? I don't want to overcook the fish. Can I have a plate work okay for you then? Uh, anything. Here you go. Maybe a little bit more. I don't cook fish very often, so I'm not real good at it. But I know this is going to taste good. Let's take this little guy off. So seeing those, you know where my brain goes? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what the cook looks like on that. It still has a little bit of... Is it translucent enough? I don't know. I think maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, that's why I'm going to leave these a little more. Well, when I saw those, 
where my brain kind of went. Now my brain always goes there. Nuggets. Little blackened fish nuggets. You do a cod, halibut, salmon. And you'd like have them. And then um, those could be good. Even if you don't eat them right away, chill. You're going to have a salad that week, maybe. Yeah, that wasn't quite done. Um, yeah, that would be good. I like how you went from the, uh, yeah, that would be good from, that wasn't really done. Oh, see, it's falling apart, so to me that means it's done. Okay, I'm going to take this off. Well, I think that's been one of the fun things about doing these videos is, one, just, it's, it's home cooking. It's not perfect, um, so the fish falling apart, stuff like that not working, but still putting together a attractive, tasty looking meal. I think that's awesome. I jump up so on there's Twitch. The I jump up on Twitch. I know there's not a lot of people who are doing food videos on Twitch, and it's really not that hard. It's pretty accessible. So I think I would encourage anybody out there who enjoys cooking. Sorry about that. I had to take that off the heat. I don't want my pan to burn up. Okay, so we got the fish here, and then I'm just going to put a little salt on this cabbage, the little lime. So I've seen some people have used like a pickled cabbage. Is it that hard to make a pickled cabbage? Um, I was thinking about doing a pickled cabbage for this recipe, but I really like the crunch of the uh, fresh cabbage then um, my bowl's a little small I know you guys can mix yours up a little better but I don't want to flop this all over town mm. is pickling a cabbage a pretty easy process or yeah it's pretty simple you just uh, chop up your cabbage put it in a jar with some salt and vinegar and uh, in a couple hours you'll have a uh, pickled cabbage huh. but I thought it would be good with this but it, like I said I wanted to make sure it had the crunch and you know that when it after it's pickled and it's set in that juice and stuff it, it's more like a kimchi kind of, of have to, have to, once we get done with this I think maybe later on tonight I'll jump up on YouTube and see if I can find any videos on how to pickle cabbage well, I don't think it's very hard what? That was your prompt to say, well, I think I would do a quick little video and show you guys how to pickle your own cabbage, some different pickling cabbage techniques. It could be a short or it could be maybe just a quick keto video. Don't know, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys in the future. Can I get another plate, please? Can I get some shameless promotion of your website? Okay, well. So hopefully you guys are liking this video, and if you do, <laughs> I'm sucking up that chili again. Um, we don't have any fancy plates ready, so you get the old school plate. If you're liking this video and you're watching this on Twitch, what? Oh, sorry, I was going to say, did you have a sauce also? Yeah, I don't have it out yet. It's in the refrigerator. Oh, sorry. Again, I was not reading production notes. Get it where you see it. Oh. Um, it's in the squeeze bottle. There you go. So I also made a little sauce to go on top. I made it earlier uh, so that it could taste better. Everything tastes better if you make it just a little bit ahead so it has the flavors all have time to meld together. What was your inspiration for the sauce? Del Taco. Del Taco. <laughs> I like the Del Taco. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, the Del Taco fish tacos, <clears throat> and they have a white sauce on their on their ch chicken, on their fish taco. So I tried to make something similar. So what's in here is, oh, uh, let me look. I wrote it down. Uh, one third cup mayonnaise, a half a cup of sour cream, 
one teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of lime. But um, depending on how limey you want it, you can you know put two tablespoons if that's what you like. But that's what I put in here. And I put it in the squeeze bottle to make it easy to put on. Fancy. So now I'm just going to put these tacos together. Now you're using the keto flour tortillas. Yes. Um, is there a, I know I've asked you this question before, but is there a uh, good keto corn tortilla recipe? that you've come across? Um, I've been thinking about trying to make one. I've seen a few recipes. I'm just not real sure how good they'll be. So I was going to kind of play with a couple of them and see how, uh, how good they are. Because to me, this really needs to be on a corn tortilla. Because I was talking to uh, Aaron and he was saying that uh, Tracy's not a big fan of the flour tortillas, the keto ones, because uh, I think they're, they're kind of too, get too gummy texture-wise. Kind of like what you were saying, why they wouldn't be good to use for a enchilada. enchilada. Yeah. So I was curious as if you were to do a corn one from your already knowledge of kind of what would have to go in there, do you think you might potentially have that same problem? Or you won't know until you try it? I won't know till. Um, I try it. So let me grab the pico de gallo and I'm going to put a little bit of that on here. <laughs> pico de gallo looks tasty. Well, there's plenty of it. I think we're going to be having tacos all week. I think we should make some blackened chicken tacos. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a total mark for this blackened chicken. All so right. Blackened seasoning makes chicken, shrimp. Dish. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of my sauce. Woo! That was gross. Let me get some more colorful plates. So, there's my fish tacos. My blackened fish tacos with pico de gallo and a white fish sauce. Fish taco sauce, I guess. Your, your, your fish, your fish sauce. Oh. Hey, well, weird question. I know you haven't taken your bite yet. So you made your fish sauce, and because I'm a total mark for your blackened stuff, if you were to mix that in there, would that give you like a little, nice little spicy sauce you could use? Yes. On other you, stuff? So yeah, if you, you don't want to have like that huge blackened chicken, you could have like a nice little sauce for your salad or something? Yeah, you can definitely add different things. You could add sriracha, you could add different spices, anything that would, you know, that sounds good to you. That's the great thing about cooking is it's all about what you think is good and you just add what you want and make it your own. So let's give this taco a try. <clears throat> if I can stop sucking up the cayenne pepper. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. All right, let's give this a taste. Hmm. Sorry, I took a big bite. That's really good. Did you just get off the off ramp at Flavor Flavor Town? Yeah, this is Flavor Town. This is really good. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna take another bite. Hope you guys uh, like this video. If you're watching on uh, my Twitch channel, please uh, follow us. And if you're watching um, the replay on Channel TL71 YouTube, please like and subscribe to get more keto videos, Irish videos. I do all different kinds of uh, cooking videos. We, we're just mainly, we try and do low carb a lot in this house, but like just like this weekend, I had that lasagna pepperoni thing, which was a total mistake, but non-keto so i do do other recipes so please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time bye
Yeah, this is this came out good. Mm.